Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. This is G. You're watching all Australo G. And this is for you, Scorpio. This is your April 2023. And I got to roll up my sleeves because we're, we're getting into Scorpio energy. And that's some serious shit. <laughs> it's always some serious, meaningful, deep stuff when you when you get into Scorpio, right? You got to roll up the sleeves because we're going to dig deep. Absolutely. We are digging deep. Um, we've got a lot to talk about this month because Mars is a big deal for the month of April. And uh, so I'm going to go over three main things this month. OK, hopefully I'll keep track of those things. And you know how I roll. Usually I end up talking about a lot more, but we're going to stay on track with the three main things, but they interweave into some other things. All right. So I want to try to stay on point for you. First off, I'm going to talk about Mars because it makes a move. It leaves the sign of Gemini and it leaves. Um, it's actually at the end of March. Yeah. End of March. It goes out of Gemini energy into cancer energy, out of Gemini and into cancer. So, I think this is beneficial for you, Scorpio, because cancer energy is water and Scorpio is water. You follow? So it's a trine. It's a sweet trine energy. So Scorpio gets a break this month, which is nice. Pisces and Scorpio get a break because Mars will be sending beneficial ease to you. So I love delivering good news, right? I did all the hard videos already. The people who are getting it the hardest, like the squares and the stress and the tension from Mars, all the cardinal signs. So Mars being in cancer is cardinal. Now, it's beneficial, but that doesn't mean it's going to be easy all the time. I want to keep it real. But you, and as far as your physical body, your empathic abilities are going to be heightened for the month of April because this is a Scorpio video, Scorpio ascendant, Scorpio rising. If you don't know what your rising and your ascendant is, they're one and the same thing. If you don't know what those are, comment to me so I can get your chart to you. And if you don't want your chart, I'll keep it on my end and I'll look it up and I'll say, this is what your rising is. This is who you are. Okay. You can watch this if you're a Scorpio birthday. Absolutely. But just remember if you're watching for your Scorpio son, it represents your son, your birthday represents authority figure. It represents someone who can possibly be older than you or dead energy. Okay. So this would send ease to that for you. That's nice. It could be you being the boss, you being the parent of somebody else, you being the authority figure over somebody else. So it sends ease because Mars is trining Scorpio. All right. Scorpio and the sun, sun represents the way you shine and radiate. It is how you create, right? That thing you do that makes you, you, you walk into a room and they're like, I know who that is. Like, that kind of that unforgettable spark in you. All right. That's your, that's your sun sign. Okay. It is your willpower, your sun sign. Scorpio, watch out. <laughs> I'm always telling people, you never go into battle against a Scorpio. You go into battle with them, not against them. Mars is the ruler and so is Pluto. So they may get stabbed. They may get shot. You know, all these crazy things where you're like, oh, my God, they're going to die. And somehow they don't die. They 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 live like that's Scorpio. That's Pluto. Right. So Mars and Mars and cancer is um, can be beneficial, can be beneficial. It'll send trine energy to you, Scorpio. It'll it'll lightly likely heighten your empathic abilities. All right. So do whatever it is that you need to do to energetically uh, protect yourself right? Because Scorpio is already a very psychic sign. It just knows things, okay? It can hear things. It just depends on how, how you receive information. We're all different. Um, uh, this, is, um, this is like amping up your ability to hear messages from the cosmos because this is like Jupiter. It's in your ninth house, that energy. It's the house of higher learning. It's the house of I'm traveling. I might even decide to go on a plane or something. It's I want to go back to school energy. When Mars goes through a, uh, a location, it activates that location. 
it's a trigger planet, which means someone like turns, presses a button and all of a sudden Mars is on. It's like, oh, we're taking action now. Right. So taking action towards learning, towards um, extended education, even uh, maybe even being the teacher, but it's religion and spirituality. A lot of you might become more involved with if you're involved with a, a traditional religion or a spiritual practice or whatever it was you were already doing. And if you weren't, maybe you'll just be exploring because adventure and exploring is a big thing. Search, search for truth and wisdom, freedom, freedom of my bodies. That's going to be a big thing too. And the judicial system, that's a big thing too. Okay. Now you you understand how Mars works, right? Cause you're a Scorpio. So I don't really want to spend a lot of time talking about Mars and how it can be very impatient, how it can be immature. Cause Mars is your ruler, right? And how it can lack, it can be easily irritated and how it can just go off and have sporadic bursts of energy and how it, um, can, can have temper tantrums or even emotional outbursts at time, right? Like that's Mars and cancer expecting emotional outbursts. Even Mars can boil the cancerian waters, right? It can boil those waters because Mars is a bit fiery. It's the turbo boosters on the rockets. That's Mars energy. And it doesn't, it does really good at starting, but not finishing because it's not, it's not lasting energy. It's sporadic bursts of energy. Think about the turbo boosters on a rocket. They only use them for a very small amount of time just to get lift off, right? That's it. So when we think about that and we understand that that's Mars, we got to realize whatever it is we, we are saying we're passionate about, just recognize if you all of a sudden find that you're not passionate about it any longer, <laughs> right? By the time April is over, don't be surprised, right? Because Mars was in cancer in your ninth house. All right. Now, March, I'm sorry, April 1st, we have a release, a an Aleko, an ending. Okay. This is Libran energy. This is significant one-on-one -on -one relationships. So for Scorpio, this is kind of in the hidden. Do you have relationships that are in the hidden? You may have relationships with people that are very important to you. And whether they're deliberately hidden, they may not be deliberately hidden, but they could be relationships that maybe you have long distance relationships with people that are very important to you. Really possible. Okay. There's a release here. So for some of you, this, this, this significant one-on-one -on -one relationship with people, these are people for whatever reason, maybe there's a disagreement. There's something ending. Something is ending. Okay. So something about that relationship is ending if it isn't the relationship itself. And it's only going to end if you have something at these matching degrees of the Libran full moon. Right. I said Libran full moon. Libra is a cardinal sign. So you see how this is a difficult month for cardinal energy because Mars in Cancer squares Libra. Right. Mars angles and sends stress and tension to relationships, significant one-on-one -on -one relationships. These can be people that you knew a long time ago. These can be people from another, from soul history. So your souls resonate on a deep level. And so you're close and you don't even understand why. So you really, really may only talk on the phone, right? You know, sometimes we have those online friends who live all across the pond. And we're like, oh my God, if they lived near me, we'd be so close. Cause we just, we really vibe, right? This can be that as well, okay? Um, so they're kind of in the hidden in that way because you don't physically see them, okay? These can also be people who are like behind closed doors, business partnerships. Do you have an under the, under the counter business partnership with somebody? Like, is there somebody that's paying you cash? This would be that because it's business partnership when we talk about Libra and energy. This represents a closure and an ending and the degrees of the full moon are 16 degrees. So we give it a four degree orb. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 degrees in the sign of Libra. Check it out in your chart. If you're not sure or if you need help, just come to me and I'll do the best I can for you. I will help you in any way I can. That's at the, the 5th. Did I say the 7th? That was April 5th. So we move on through the month and we're going to April 19th. We have a big beginning here and Mars is part of it. Again, Mars is another factor, right? So the first thing we talked about in the beginning of the video was Mars being in the sign of cancer. The second thing we talked about was the full moon in the month of April, the beginning of the month. The third thing is this new moon that Mars rules. But there's more. It's a bigger deal than just a new moon. This is a total solar eclipse new moon. Okay. Now, this is in Aries. And Aries 
and Mars, because Mars rules Aries, is all about starting stuff. Let's initiate. Let's do this. Let's go, go, go. Like Mars can never go fast enough. It always feels like it's in last. It always feels like it's not moving, like it could just be moving faster, that it's moving too slow. That's how Mars energy feels. Okay. And that's why it's always moving so fast and why it feels like it's so driven because it feels like it's behind. Right. So Mars tries to sprint. It feels like it's in a race with everybody else and that it's got to sprint like these are your race car drivers. Absolutely. It feels like it's got to sprint. So Mars energy being part of this eclipse says we're really passionate about this thing. And because it's a solar eclipse, it's a new beginning. And because it's solar, it's usually tangible and material. So it's something we're physically going to see in our life. Okay. Now, where does this happen in your chart? Ooh, sixth house. You're having an eclipse in your sixth house. Sixth house is daily routines. It can be domestic, but it's things just like tasks and projects, to-do lists, right? It's the simple things like mundane, not super important stuff. You're having you're having an eclipse there. You have Aries energy there. So you do these things really quickly. So like I know a Scorpio and man, when she goes into the kitchen and cooks, the flames are on high all the time. I've always called her a speed cook and that's Mars energy. She speed cooks through everything and, and whatever it is she's cooking, whatever it is she's baking. Like, yeah, her cookies, she says she loves them burnt. Okay. She loves them crunchy because she burns every damn thing. Cause she's a speed cook. Everything's got to be on high. Cause if it's on high, it'll get done faster. You see, these are just practical ways to understand this energy. Right. But yeah, anyhow. So when she goes and she works out speed, when she cleans house speed, matter of fact, she does housekeeping house cleaning as a business because she can clean fast. Right. So it actually works out for her. It's a great placement for that. Actually, it's a really good placement because she can do it independently. She can, she works better independently. And that's what Aries energy is in the sixth house, because the rate of speed in which you move at isn't the rate of speed everybody else moves at. And to expect them to move at that rate of speed, they're going to then look at you and think you're being pushy. Okay. And so you're better off working at your rate of speed because it works for you. Right. Now, I also want to say that Mars ruling this, this is about your future. So I'm thinking about my friend and I'm thinking, wow, this is probably, this probably has a lot to do with clients, right? It's a new beginning. So adding new clients, getting new clients, people that are part of your future, right? I know in her line of business, some houses are not worth her time because the amount of money based on the space and the level of care needed in that home requires way more of her time than these people can afford. And therefore, it's not affordable for her. She can't literally make any money off of it because her time she could be spending at another home where the money that she can get for that square space and that amount of level of care that they need, she can make the same amount of money and spend half the amount of time there. And so for her going forward, I'm just using this as an example. She hasn't said this to me and I'm not I'm not giving away any names. So there's, there's no uh, privacy issue, but it's a great example. And I think of her, her scenario, I could see her saying, based on what I value, based on my needs and based on who I value, because that's what this eclipse is about. Even though it's in Aries, it's based on the nodal ax. It's based on the node. It's based on the North node and it's in Taurus. So if the North Node's in Taurus, who I value, what I value, we're looking at our resources, we're looking at the bank account, we're looking at accounts coming in, accounts receivable, and we're thinking, how can I receive more? So we're really thinking about that. And that has everything to do with our future, our plans for our future. Where am I headed for my future? So there could be a change in that, a change in daily routines, sixth house. There could also be a change in health routines because she would go work out over here. Maybe she, we're just going to keep using her as an example so that this is kind of seamless. You know, it makes sense. She could used to go to this club. Now she's going to go work out at this club. Maybe she stopped doing the club altogether and got some gym equipment at home because at home she can work out alone. And she finds out that she doesn't get distracted when she works out alone. You see what I'm saying? works out better alone, works better alone, actually gets more done when it's when she's by herself, right, moves at her own rate of speed, right, right, you see, so because it's the sixth house and it's alternative, maybe she'll take up walking, maybe she'll take up yoga, it's something new coming in, 
because it's the North Node and because it's Aries, which is I'm starting something new. Sixth house of daily routines of my domestic side of life, but it can be your work and your job tasks and projects at those jobs. It's like the calendar. It's like I do this on the regular, right? It's um, it's energy that says I'm really fast and I need to use this energy. I need a healthy outlet for this energy, right? But it's the stomach and the digestion. So someone with Aries here that it goes fast. They might find that things move too fast through their body. Their digestion moves too quick at times. So it has to find ways to, to actually um, balance it out, right? With, with different things in the diet even, or stress levels. Absolutely. Because this house placement, sixth house, has to do with the mental and emotional stress and how it affects the stomach, how it affects the body, how it affects the digestion. Okay. So a new beginning could be health, could be job, could be professional, could just have to do with the things you do around the home, the domestic side of life. It could be all of the above, but either way, it's a solo thing. So we're keeping in mind about Mars for the month of April, because Mars being in the sign of cancer, it sends square energy. It sends, where's my thing? Where's my thing? Hold on. I got a thing. Here it is. This is the energy. This is Aries. This is Libra at each end of the pen. Visualize it, okay? Aries and Libra at each end of the pen. I don't know which way is better. But Cancer energy, look at that, is down there at the bottom. And Capricorn energy is up at the top. This is a cardinal cross, okay? A cardinal cross. So if Mars is at the bottom, unless you have something in Capricorn at the top, then you won't have a cardinal cross. But you can have a T-square because Aries is over here and Libra is at the other end because Cancer is down here. You see, so Mars is sending for the month of April angles this way to ear to Aries, to your sixth house, daily routines and health. Mars is stress and tension, which is why I said she may decide that's not worth it any longer. That's not helping me get to where I need to go or that's not good for my health even. Sometimes she uses um, cleaners that may give her a headache, right? There may be a health routine she was doing that gave her a pinched nerve. Yep. All these things happen. This is why I'm, because Mars will push us. Mars pushes us to do things we don't normally do, or it makes us go above and beyond our speed. And it's, it's okay if it's in short bursts, but when we try to stay on that level, it creates stress in the body. And that stress creates a whole bunch of other things that I'm not qualified to talk about because I'm not, yeah. I'm not a fitness guru, okay? I just know my own body and stress is an absolute killer for me. It hits my adrenals and I'm gone. Like it's, 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 I'm done, right? It's, it doesn't work well for me at all. So Mars can send stress and tension, all right? So keep all these things in mind and be a little bit more patient. Absolutely bring in, ask for some patience from your, from your angels, from your, however you feel about that world out there and whoever it is that you connect and talk to, or even from people in your life. Uh, stress and tension, possibly in the home and family, stress and tension, possibly with your physical body and digestion and uh, your 12th house, your significant hidden partnerships or people that are far away from you that you do not get to see on a regular basis. There may be some stress and tension there. Okay. So that's the three main things for the month of April. Uh, it can be very beneficial. Like I said, Mars actually sends trying energy to Scorpio and Mars rules your sign. So just remember about being empathic and your levels of sensitivities and your intuitions probably being amped up a bit and your body being more empathically sensitive, meaning you could be in a room and you could um, know things about another person because you will feel it in your own body. And I don't know how to explain that because I've, I have experience with this. You can feel when someone doesn't feel good, like you may be able to feel that they have a pain in their arm or they may have a headache or they have a pain in their foot because you'll have that pain in your own body, but it's not your own physical body. There's an energetic body on the outside. On, on, there's another layer of energy. There's lots of layers, our aura, right? There's lots of layers of energies around us, our energetic body. And what happens is your energetic body feels that. And so you know to associate it with the foot, right? So you feel it, yet you don't suffer from feeling it. You see? So that's how that works. And because Mars will be in Cancer and Cancer is empathic, it will increase body sensitivities. So keep that in mind. 
All right. I hope this helps. You've got any questions, comment below, and I'll help you any way I can. Thank you, Scorpio. Happy 2023. See you in the next video. Bye-bye. Below the video, I'll have all the degrees for those of you who like to pay attention to the degrees in your chart. Again, if you don't know and you want to know, just comment below.